Good morning, everyone. Welcome to Gulfstream Today. Ron Nicoletti along with Akeisha Courtney. Beautiful day here in <laughs> South Florida. Fast main track, firm turf course. It is back to being Florida weather again. Yes, it is. It was a little hazy this morning, too, but uh, it certainly warmed up. The sun is out. Sun is shining. We love that. We have a firm turf course in play and looking forward to a great day of racing alongside you and Brian. Yeah, it's going to be a fun day. And we have one point one million dollar gross jackpot guarantee in the rainbow six it's amazing how this thing just keeps getting bigger and bigger and that is today so 12 races seven through 12 and of course our feature race is part of that sequence it is the Gulfstream park sprint a little bit later on where we'll see drain the clock and diamond oops match up in a nice sprint race but that's a little bit later on yesterday was a really tough rainbow six sequence nobody was alive for a single heading into the last leg so good luck if you're playing today yeah you got a chance to be a million air. So race number one is one mile on the turf maiden claiming three year olds, 35 to 30. And Brian put a ticket together, early pick five. Let's check it out and we'll see. He's got 24 bucks today. Three horses in the opener. Currently, the even money favorite is the Brendan Walsh runner, Daniel Sun. Two deep in the second, a single in race number three. Singling the eight, Shady Capture, the number three starting up a late scratch, significant scratch there. But Brian's got a single in that race, which should help. Two horses in the fourth and then a spread in the fifth race, which is a tricky claiming race to wrap up the sequence. $24 play. $24 play, very affordable. And that will be kicking off in about uh, 54 minutes thereabouts. So race number one, I did go with the number three, Daniel Sun, who's now in the Brendan Walsh bond, the gelded son of Kitten Joy, finally gets a chance to run on the turf after getting rained out. And a trio of grass races scheduled for the turf up there at Woodmont. Yeah, and he's got a big turf pedigree too by Kitten's Joy out of a mare who won twice on the turf. The best sibling was Curlin's Voyage, who was not a turf horse, was a, a grade three winner but the other foal did win three times on grass as well. So there's pedigree to suggest it. He's been working on the Palmetto's turf course, and I know that you had a stat for this kind of move. Yeah, Brendan Waltz, first after the train to switch, first time on the turf. He's 4 mm -hmm. for 12, 33%, 58% in the money, and a nice return of investment of $4.13. Not a big sampling, but a very good sampling. And I know your son is named Dan. It's a little <laughs> bit of a hunch bet for you, right? Yeah, right, son, Dan, son. If it was S-O-N, I would have bet the bank on it. But I'll go with the S-U-N in here. Uh, let's go with your horse that you have in second, and that's the five by uh, John who's dropping to the 35 level today. And that was a big thing for me. Uh, the races at Laurel against Made and Special Weight Company uh, were, were good efforts. And last time out, it was a, a, an oddly run race. He was off slow. He was really far back that day. He did have an outside post and um, just wasn't able to even get close to the leaders at any point in the race. But I'm kind of going off those races two and three back. It was a little bit more tactical. It's a significant drop in class, and he does pick up up Javier Castellano. Turn out Jane Sabelli. I did go with the four and second Blue Dose Candy. We were talking about this. Love the name of this yeah. horse. Moving to the turf after responding in that first race after the claim by uh, uh, Aubrey Mirage with a third place finish against this same level. That, but that was going a mile 70 yards on the, on the torpedo. I'm going to defer to you. It's the son of twirling candy. Certainly bred to handle the turf. Yeah, no, certainly is. It ran okay last time out. I It wasn't so much of a trying to move away from this horse. It was I just kind of preferred others. I thought that the number one was a little bit interesting. Food bank helper. I went off of pedigrees as well uh, by Creative Cause. He's by Giants Causeway out of a uh, Kitten's Joy mayor. And this one did not do much running last time out, but second off the claim for Gilberto, Gilberto Zorpa. So we'll see how he takes to the grass. That is race number one today. Race number two this afternoon. Seven furlongs claimers. Phillies and mares, four-year-olds and up, uh, $8,000. No scratches in this race. And uh, boy, you can go two different ways in here. We'll start with Rain, but then we'll show, uh, show uh, Brit. Well, let's show Pretty Rachel first. Yeah, Pretty Rachel, she has just been terrific in her <laughs> career. She's won nine of 20. We're taking a look at her most recent victory. She has won her last eight starts in a row which is just incredible. And she's been popular at the claim box, too. She now goes out for Pedro Garcia, who picked her up for 8,000 last time out, keeping the status quo, or I should say won her last eight of nine after a disappointing performance in the claiming crown. But she's a cool horse. Can she keep it going?
right. And she's got a buddy in the saddle. That's Marcos Meneses, who's been on board for eight of her past 15 ra races, you know, eight of her wins. So, she, mm -hmm. you know, he uh, handles her well. But I can understand she's going to jump up. Uh, well, you know, changing barns. Maybe you go with a horse like the number one rain who's changing barns too, going to the Enrique Torres barn. Just pick up by Rad Ortiz. I thought that was interesting. Obviously, she's claimed off of a good barn in Jose D'Angelo, um, who couldn't get her to win last time out. She finished second behind Pretty Rachel. So I, I, I'm not going to give her too much of a hard time <laughs> for that with a horse that was in such good form. So she does have a little bit more of a freshening as well. Pretty Rachel had another race in between those. She's been running a lot, Pretty Rachel has. So I'm hoping that Rain, who's coming in a little bit fresher, Rad Ortiz picking up the mount. She has some natural speed as well from the inside. Maybe she could turn the tables. Yeah, that last race was on, actually on Christmas Eve, so mm -hmm. it's been a while since she's been. I went with Luna Blast in third, who's uh, turning back to seven eighths of a mile, and Pretty Rachel loves that distance of seven furlongs. Finishing second as the favorite against those condition claimers, uh, six thousand two hundred and fifty dollars uh, going a mile. Gerald Brooks claimed her last time out. Going to have the apprentice, ten pound apprentice, Cage Holmes in the saddle, so getting in light, mm -hmm. turning back today. Yeah, and we'll see. She has been running at the non-winners of three conditions. Mm -hmm. So she's just won twice. She's stepping up to face open today. So that's going to be the challenge as well. You've got a horse like Pretty Rachel who's won nine in her career. And this is one who's still kind of in that non-three condition. And she, Putty, I know you have your ticket. I did, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> like the way you said that. This is the other one from Gerald Brooks. The sprint race two starts back was much better than the distance try last time out. We wait. Let's go to race number three this afternoon. Six and one half furlongs, maiden claiming three rolls, sixteen thousand dollars. Uh, blinkers off the number four pork chop. Great name for a horse. We had that late scratch of starting up. We just got it as we went on the air today, yep. so things changed around a little. Uh, both did you get? I, I had that one on top, and I know I did you too. did. So we scratched into Shady Camp. Sadie Capture. Yes, and this one is taking a drop in class. Ran poorly last time out as the favorite, but ran quite well two starts back, actually. Um, is a gelding. Do note that if you have the, the uh, racing form uh, listed as a call, is a gelding. Uh, if those are the kinds of things that you keep track of, this one is taking that drop, which I think really should be significant and hopefully gets him back on track today. Uh, and the number five horse of Protonic Power now in the Fausto Gutierrez bond, and that's uh, significant. He's going to have Latruska schooling yep. a little later today. Yep, Latruska getting ready to run in the Royal Delta next weekend here, which is exciting. Champion, older mayor. This is a, a, a colt who's by Protonico, uh, but he is the half-brother half to grade one winner, Princess Noor. Hasn't done any running in his two races so far, one on dirt, one on turf. It's a significant drop in class today, so we'll see how things do play out as he takes that big drop, but he's a little bit of a tough one to trust. Yeah, that last race, the winner's side dog came back and mm -hmm. won a stakes uh, the next time out, so certainly good so we'll see how this plays out. We both uh, scratched into Pork Chop. We one who's going to run with the blinkers off today. Yes, Pork Chop uh, dropping down. <laughs> He's already been exposed for Mating Claiming Company before, but this is the lowest level that he will have run for. Got to love that name. Mm -hmm. Let's go to race number four this afternoon. Six and one half furlongs, fast main track. These are claimers. Phillies and mares, four and up numbers of two races in life. $6,250 scratch. The number three horse in here. I uh, had that horse in second. All along, I had the number two. And you do your Gita Queen on top. Yeah, I actually had She's a Savage on top oh, at first. So I scratched into Yagita Queen. But I agree with you. I think that those were kind of the main two players of this race. And Yagita Queen did win last time out. She did so nicely, um, taking a big step forward after clipping heels to Two starts back. She's got to get out of the gate. That's been a bad habit. You see three out of her four races. The short comment is that she's had some sort of trouble at the start of the race. So that's going to be the key for her to break well today. But Paco Lopez rode her last time and will stay up again today. The number seven, Ellie Reese Aston, is turning back to six and a half furlongs after returning from the seven-month layoff to finish that uh, screw-tightening third against this level who's going to one turn mile for Antonio Sano. Arad Ortiz Jr. will be in the saddle. He's cutting back in distance. Antonio, Arad Ortiz, it uh, kind of all makes sense teaming up again together. Um, and this one is sprinting at this level for the first time. So I think that that's going to be a big move for her, the number one snackster.
is kind of the unknown. She really has some dirtied up form. She hasn't run since July. So she's going all the way from 20 down to 62.50. But it is a big drop in class. And she seems to be working pretty well coming back. Yeah, and Rohan Crichton, the trainer, is having a really good media. I think he's batting around 30% there or about. So uh, we'll go to race number five today. And we're going on the uh, to Peter here. It's about a mile into 16 claimers. Phillies and mares, four-year-olds, and up non-winners of three races in life. 12-5 down to $10,000. Scratch the number seven, Sylvanella. Uh, I had all along the number five, Dan Zatelli, on top of my ticket, who's stepping up to the next logical level, as I see it, after following her 12-5 maiden score, going nine furlongs on the torpedo with a 10 uh, thousand uh, two lifetime victory going a mile into 16. Also on the all weather surface, Gilberto Zerpa, Javier Castellano. It looks like this horse is in a good spot to make it number three. I agree. I actually tried to say, okay, is there a way <laughs> I could potentially go against this horse, maybe find a little bit more value? And she just honestly just made sense. She won going nine furlongs to break her maiden for a 12 5. You don't see that very often. <laughs> then came right back for the non winners of two. We know that she loves the tapita. She's going to get the right kind of trip. Kim, perfect Kimberly S. Got the win last time out, um, also at nine furlongs. So she's going the about mile and a 16th today. But prior to that, she'd really been racking up the in the money finishes. So we'll see as she steps up to the next level. But I do think that she's kind of that that next logical player. Yeah, so these look like the logical two. And then I added Sprites, ladies dropping to this level, lose lost all chance. If you look at the last trouble line, a small trouble line, that head was turned at the start. 23 lifetime drop down. That was a rained off uh, event move today. It's Peter. And I went with the four no down days who is taking a drop in class as well. But I thought this was just a major speed play. We'll see if she can hold on for a share. Things really pick up nicely now in race number six. This five furlongs on the turf. These are nice maiden special weight three-year-olds. A nice full field here this afternoon. We didn't get the scratch of the 13 yet. I don't know if they have it, but we'll let you know. Pete will be on, update you on all the scratches. With that said, right now, full field in here. Uh, both you and I went with Big Invasion. Big Invasion ran well first time out. We'll take a look at that first race. Uh, Colt, by declaration of war, going the five furlongs. And we'll take a look at the start as they I think that that kind of maybe threw him off a little bit, broke in a touch. You do see the short comment, hit gate. It wasn't too significant, but it was enough to kind of put him behind horses. Red Ortiz was able to get him into a good position along the rail, save ground. Now you did have a Wesley Ward runner, an American starlet, who just ran everybody else off their feet in this race. <laughs> so that's why I wanted to show the start, because the winner, Wired, went right to the front, whereas this horse had a little bit of trouble coming out of the gate and just wasn't able to catch that wire-to-wire -wire winner. Yeah, and that is very significant when you're dealing with these five front turf races. I found a stat on Mr. Christophe Clement with horses making their second start sprints, maiden special weight on the turf. He's solid. You knew he would be 8 for 30, 27%, 60% in the money. Uh, 179 is the return of investment. That's over the past five years. Uh, you know, Kristoff does an incredible job with his uh, turf sprinters. And, of course, you get around Ortiz Jr. Lots to like about the number one big invasion. Not part of the Rainbow Six, so you couldn't uh, otherwise. <laughs> you'd think maybe a single in this horse, but no, that's not the case. Uh, in second, I'll, I'll go with my horse. Second horse is Maya Prince, who's making his uh, second start a after finishing a solid second. His career debut at this level in distance for Mike Trombetta. Edwin Gonzalez win but races in bunches since he came back. This is a son of a Stern. And this is a horse that was kind of on the bubble for me, and I really wanted to use him because <laughs> I love a Stern's on the turf. Um, but this, I, I thought this horse ran well first time out. Um, just thought that, with oh, well, we talked about a Wesley Ward wire to wire <laughs> winner with Big Invasion's first race. He's got another Wesley horse in. In here, called by Caravaggio in the three Nara, who um, showed speed and, and was not able to sustain it on the tapita at Woodbine back as a two year old in June. Blinkers come off a typical kind of Wesley Ward first time three year old move here, trying the turf for the first time and very fast works on the Palmetto's turf course. So I would expect this will be a big part of the pace. Yeah, in 37% Wesley is with horses going from all weather surfaces to the turf. So it's a good move for him. He does it all over the country. So we'll see how that horse runs. 
runs. I've got mentioned this horse was up at uh, in Canada at, at Woodbine. Uh, who else did use the number 10 horse in here? And that is Airspeed Velocity. Well, this one has a big turf pedigree. I'm a little bit intrigued by this cult by J for Jimmy Toner. Some really quick works on the Palmetto's turf course. And I know that the works there have tended to be fast. That turf up there right now is very, very quick. But this is out of a mare who's a stakes winner, one on turf. The second dam is actually soaring softly, Breeders' Cup Philly mare turf winner. So there's a big pedigree. She's been a fine producer, so we'll see um, if this one's ready to go at first asking. Could be interesting. Yeah, Jimmy Tona does a great mm -hmm. job. Great guy. So uh, that is how we see the first six. We'll take a short break, come back from my rainbow six ticket. We'll see how, it how much it cost. <laughs> Welcome back, Gulfstream today, Ron and Acacia, seventh race this afternoon, about a five and a half furlongs on the old weather to Peter, kicks off the Rainbow Six, 57.60 for me, I figure $1.1 $1 .1 million, I'll go and I dug up another <laughs> little can in my backyard, I got some extra money, <laughs> we'll talk about uh, race seven in just a moment, we got some coverage in race number eight, uh, you know, with the two, Smoking Bo, uh, Reddington, and Paco's Pico, and, and I got lots of coverage going on, race 10 I thought was wide open, we're Rocket Joe Copper, Dr. Shane, Devoted Kitten. These horses take chances of beating each other. And I'm going to just go. I, I don't usually do this, but I'm just going to single drain the clock. Just, you know, classes up perfectly. Runs well fresh. Firing bullets. And in the last race, got my long shot in there with the number six horse at Ableton. But there's a lot of nice horses in that race, including the morning line favorite, the two. Uh, used them all. Four for me. 57-60. Sort of learning this stuff from Brian. He likes to put a lot of horses all over the place. <laughs> so. I like that. <laughs> What did you hear, do here in race number seven? I went with the number one, Indy Lion, down to the inside. Uh, Chantel Sutherland with a win in the nightcap. <laughs> this, uh, she actually piloted this horse to his last win uh, as well, which was with previous connections. Knocking on the door, ran actually quite well last time out in a starter allowance race with an 88 buyer speed figure. Huge effort for Rohan Crichton, and I thought it was intriguing, this one. Has some natural speed with the scratch of the two, like a salt shaker, who I thought was going to be the main pace. I would expect this one to send from the inside. And that's when I think you like Chantel Sutherland most, putting a horse on the lead and being able to get them comfortable. Also scratch, a horse that we like a lot, Frenchman mm -hmm. Street, who's a hard knocking campaigner. So those two came out. I, I went with the seven here, Senor Joe Beam, who's uh, they move into the Larry Ravelli barn after the claim debuts locally, finished third. That was those 35 optional claims going six. That was that sealed sloppy track. The barn is redonkulous. 50% with new claims. Aran Ortiz, the top, the winner of three or five races. I made up a word on the whole weather service. Do the kids still say that? I don't know. I heard it somewhere, and it's in my brain, and it came out. Now, we were going to show... That's a dangerous thing. Yeah. We were going to show Frenchman Street, but City Drift is stayed in which Frenchman Street is out. Yes, yeah, City... <laughs> City... <laughs> City Drifter. Woo! Yeah. Comes out of a race that was second by a nose last time out behind Frenchman Street, who, yes, is out of this race. But I thought that we saw this was a drop in class as well after facing really tough 62,000 allowance, op uh, allowance optional claiming types two starts back. Last time out on the, <laughs> the starter <laughs> allowance, being just a nose behind Frenchman Street. I thought he ran really well is the point. <laughs> the point he's trying to make. She's trying to make. <laughs> so that is it. So in the race today, so uh, one of those wide open races 
races. I think if you have a single like maybe, uh, you know, the feature race, you go deep when you're putting your Rainbow Six ticket together here. It's a wide open affair, especially with those two scratches. Only that five horse field. So maybe you go all and uh, single a couple of horses a little further on. Uh, race number eight this afternoon, seven furlongs, maiden optional claimer, three year olds, $50,000. Nice full field of 11 runners going to kick off the late pick five. Brian put a ticket together. He did late pick five kicking off here in a nice way with this made an optional claiming and he's spreading using five horses here, which I think you need to a really wide open race. Going to have a single in the ninth with that turf sprint hit the whoa. She looks hard to get around, even though she is a tough one to trust sometimes. Just seems like she's found herself in the right spot. Four horses in the 10th race, another wide open one. Brian's doing the same as you, Ron, singling drain the clock in the Gulfstream sprint and then four in the nightcap. Yeah, I mean, drain the clock is going to be the key. It's almost so you would think it would be a late pick five or mm -hmm. a late pick four, excuse me, and the Rainbow Six, a late pick five. I ended up going with Smoke and Bowen here, who's moves to the Kelly Breen barn today. Uh, at, you know, at, with the claim, at, stretches out to seven furlongs, finished that improved second when Lasix was added, going six furlongs last time out. Edwin Gonzalez, a three-win day. Uh, was that yesterday or the day before? So yeah. he's riding in great form. He'll be about... Uh, atop this gelded son of Oxbow. I have my long shot in here. I went with the three sensual chocolate. So this one debuted on the turf after scratching out uh, towards the start of the, the meet and didn't take much money. Pedigree said dirt and his physicality, at least to my eye, too, said dirt. So I was kind of confused because nothing really spoke to him being a, a turf horse as well. As we often say, Safi Joseph Jr., second time out, that's when you want them with maidens. And I would think that that would maybe just be an opportunity to get a race into him. He's a Florida bred. He doesn't have to run for the tag. So I love him getting back to the dirt or running on the dirt for the first time today. Going to be a nice price as well. 20 to 1 on the morning line. 20 to 1 on the morning line. I know we both had some interest in Reddington, who's wheeling back today. Yeah, we'll show this last race, or his debut race anyway, on January 23rd for Rusty Arnold. He's from the outside post. That's sometimes a compromising position as well. Hops up a little bit at the break, but got to give it to Louis Saez. He hustled him after that, and he got him up close and into position, though unfortunately with that post, he's parked a little bit wide early on in the race. Now we go through, and we're at the quarter pole. He actually dropped his riding crop. So he's there in an uncomfortable position between horses, takes him to the outside, and it's just a hand ride here because he has no crop. So this is a horse, I think he is far and above the one to beat off of this effort. The fact that he was still able to finish second after this effort and it just speaks to the strength of Louis Saez handwriting him to get up in, in second place. Yeah, so it was a real good performance. I actually found the stat on the trainer who was Rusty Arnold on this horse. Horse is making a second start. Maiden special weight. Sprints on the dirt. He's good. He's, uh, you know, 5 for 29, uh, 17%, 34% in uh, money with a nice return of investment of $3.13. MSC Al Jaramillo, uh, Louis Sai is out of town riding mm -hmm. today. And that's, well, we got a little, couple of musical jockeys this afternoon. Yeah, but I think you've got, uh, once again, a really strong speed rider in here, too. Todd Fletcher has a horse in this race, Celestial Gaze, who didn't take much money on debut and didn't do much running either. Blinkers go on. Irad Ortiz is here. He, he goes from going long on turf to sprinting <laughs> on dirt. What do you get today? The number five, Paco's Pico, goes to Rohan Crichton's bond. After that claim steps up, shaky trouble at the start. Was a little fractious in that race. Finished second against 35 maidens going seven eights. The bond is really good, 35 with new claims, 35%. Miguel Vasquez at the controls today. Uh, one of those races you saw Brian's ticket. You see our selections <laughs> right up there. This is one of the races where you go, D. Yeah, I agree. And watch <laughs> the board, too, especially if you're playing the late pick five. It's good with the maiden race. You can see how the board is playing. Let's go to race number nine this afternoon. And this is five furlongs on the turf. Allowance optional claim of Phillies Advance, four-year-olds up optional claiming price of $25,000. Scratch to four in here. And, and it, you, like you said, Brian single here. And I think this is the horse to beat. And that's number three. Hit the whoa. Yeah, and it is tough because she broke her maiden in an off the turf race at Aqueduct. And she did so really impressively. Got a big figure that day. And unfortunately, she's been a little bit of a shaky horse as far as being able to trust her and get to the winner's circle. But she just seems to outclass this field. And that was why I just couldn't get around her. I mean, you look back, she ran third in the Sanibel Island by just half a length uh, last year on the turf, was beaten less than two lengths in the grade three, soaring softly at, Sarah, at, at Belmont. So uh, the class 
past and just who she's been facing um, as she goes uh, and back on the turf today sprinting. Uh, she looks like she's going to be tough. The number seven, Tracy, Tracy Ann's legacy is a seven-time turf winner at the distance in for the tag in this 25 optional claim. Go back on the grass, return for the layoff, finish that track and fade eighth and last, but that was against 62, 500 optional claimers, and that race was moved from the grass to the all-weather. Kelly Brain Paco, four-time local turf winner. This horse has got some uh, ability here in South Florida. She does, and she has speed as well, which is always a, a, a dangerous commodity. The number six, Zia's song, is second off the layoff for Safi Joseph Jr. The blinkers go on. She gets to go back to the turf as well, which is where she broke her maiden. I think this is her preferred surface. Yeah, she broke her maiden here, and, you know, which behind hit the wall last mm -hmm. time up. But as we just mentioned, second off the bench for Safi, pretty good move. Absolutely. Race number 10, back on the all weather at about a mile in the 16th. These are claimers, four and up, $10,000. Uh, no scratches. Bought a late part of this card. Lots of full mm -hmm. fields and lots of different ways to go. Uh, you went with the number two in here, Dr. Shane, who's stretching out slightly today against these 10 open claimers. I don't know what it is about this horse. I just <laughs> always liked him. He's, he's tough. He shows up every time. He showed last time that he can handle the torpedo without any problem. That was one of those dated claimers. He suited that race quite, quite nicely. He has some tactical speed. And coming back, I think, at this 10000 and just seems like the right level for him. I know I have on top the number eight, Rocky Joe Cop, who's stretching out to the mile of 16th. I know you've got a video you wanted to show. Yeah, he was game last time out. We'll show that last race. And this was off of a layoff from September to January as well for Kathleen O'Connell, who quietly has been having a terrific meet here throughout the winter at Gulfstream. Keeps Paco Lopez aboard. He'll be running late. Had to uh, swing wide <laughs> there and, and just able to get up in time. Yeah, I mean, he's a hard-knocking campaigner. And uh, as you mentioned, Kathleen, this is a nine-year-old who just keeps on running. Yeah. So we'll see how Rocky Joe Joe Coppa runs this afternoon. Dr. Shane, for all the reasons that you mentioned. And, and I also use the number one devoted kitten who's going to the Peter Waldebon after the claim, looking to recapture the form he displayed, winning impressively at this level way back in November. Uh, the, the barn is 19% uh, with new claims. You get a rad in the saddle, trying to spark that wake-up call today. Yeah, and then you have Farley, the three, who we just saw that replay. Mm. He was a neck behind Rocket Joe Copper. So I think you have to give a little bit of a look to him as well for Antonio Sano. That, that is race number 10. It is feature race time, race number 11. Six furlongs, four-year-olds and up. It is the $150,000 Gulfstream Park Sprint. Not graded this year, but look who's in this field. It will be graded. We did have one scratch in here of uh, uh, Doc Amster, the number three. What a good field. Yeah, it is. I mean, you have a grade one winner, a multiple <laughs> graded stakes winner uh, in, in Diamond Oops as well. Graded stakes winner and miles ahead. We'll start with Drain the Clock, and uh, we just have top three picks because it is a short field. My right. fourth pick all along was the number one, Gatsby, as he and Drain the Clock ran very well last time out. But Drain the Clock, we take a look. This was an allowance race, his first time out of graded stakes company in quite a while. And Gatsby stayed with him every step of the way. you got to give him that. Drain the Clock was coming off of a layoff. It was his first start since being beaten a couple of times by Jackie's Warrior. He faced life is good two starts back. Obviously a little bit of class relief and the class prevailed. Certainly a race that you would expect should propel him to bigger and better things. Yeah, it really ran exceptionally well. You know, of course, during the clock, I needed that race coming off the bench. should set him up perfectly, but look what Gatsby, Gatsby did in that mm -hmm. race. That was back in December. Now they're going to renew the rivalry today after posting a 103 yeah. buyer figure when he drew clear to win the six for along $100,000 Sunshine Sprint. 109 flat. Boy, they got this horse in good form. Yep. Carlos David, Javier Castellano. Oh, yeah. He's in good form right now for sure. And then you also have the number four miles ahead. Eddie Plisa is in very good <laughs> form. This horse won the Claiming Crown Rapid Transit two starts back. Last time out, I know it was an allowance race. This is a horse that won the grade three smile sprint last winter. So don't think, or last summer, I should say, don't think that he's a, a class below maybe some of the others in here. He is a graded stakes winner just last summer, and he's in good form once again coming off of a couple of nice wins. You know, I, I talk about your fourth pick, my fourth pick, mm -hmm. and I, I love this horse, Diamond Oops, today. It's just so versatile. Yeah, and I don't think anybody <laughs> loves Diamond Oops more than Andy V. And, Cone, <laughs> and of course, we're rooting for, for her. And uh, yeah, this horse, great at stakes winner, turf and dirt. He runs every time. We're happy to see him back he, uh, in his home state of Florida. <laughs> home state. You got it right. I usually say home city of Florida, but you got it right. So that is a great race. You uh, did you, say redonkulous earlier. <laughs> 
earlier, <laughs> too. So. I don't know where that came from. So drain the clock. Do you single it? That's the question. But you can make a case for all the other horses like we just mm -hmm. did. Uh, a final race on the 12 race card. One mile on the turf maiden, claiming three rolls. 35000 down to $30,000. And this is the way you want to end the day. Just a wide open race. And you can just see by our selections so <laughs> many different ways to go in here. No scratches. Full field of 11. Uh, take it away with your number five. I went to the number five, Tap It Rio for Lily Curtin as this one gets back on the turf. Turf race two starts back at a huge price and from an outside post I thought was actually pretty strong. Um, and this is a drop down to the 35,000 today. I thought it was a wide open race. This one has some tactical speed. Luca Panici going to stay aboard. Thought this was a race where you want to look for some value. And that's what I did with my selection to number six, Ableton, who's dropping to the 35 level. Sort of made a middle move last time out finished sixth. It was those 50 uh, uh, claimers, uh, you know, 50 debut claiming mile on the turf of John Kimmel. Pretty good. He's like 17%, but he's got a positive return investment with Maidens making their second start. He's got Angel Arroyo. Just looking for a long shot, and I think this horse has license to run mm -hmm. better this afternoon. Yeah, the one to beat uh, would be Quantum Theory, who tries the turf for the first time, ran well on the Tapita last time, um, but does have a, a little bit of a pedigree as well. Three-time turf winning dam here, so we'll see how he takes to the grass, but it, it's a tough race and, and a big field to wrap up the day as well. Yeah, you know, he's the, the absolute the horse to be. One other horse I just wanted to touch on was the four versatile, who's dropping to the 35 level, getting Lasix today. First race finished fifth against Maiden Special Weight Runners going a mile 16th on the turf here in December. Jeff Hiles, Edwin Gonzalez dropped down today. Another horse you can make a case for. Yeah, lots of cases that you can make here. <laughs> Irish King, I liked a little bit trying the turf. I rather tease aboard for Dave Fox. Well, let's have we see the 12 race card and uh, we will go to our lightning round today. And big news in the lightning round starting <laughs> off. It is Beat the Expert Day and it's Keisha's turn. So you got a chance to uh, beat the expert today. Yep, I'm in the hot seat. Uh, I'm ready. I hope that you will play along. It's free to play. Go to GulfstreamPark.com and see if you can pick more winners than me. Uh, we always enjoy it every week uh, and it's a lot of fun. I have already had a couple people tweeting at me that they're <laughs> locked in, they're ready for it, and we, we love to see that. Well, we have a, a contest that we do in each every year with the beat the host and just by coincidence yeah you're I also beat, beat the host, host as well on, on first bet so make sure you check that out too <laughs> yes you're gonna you're gonna have to do it now the Stronic Five, once again, blew up the board yesterday. We had a $39 horse mm -hmm. in here. Look at that payout. Yeah, absolutely. $39 horse in the nightcap at Gulfstream. Hope you had it. Uh, Chantel Sutherland bringing the winner home. 27000 as Pete Aiello always says. It's so Overlay City. Well, $67 winner in Santa yeah. Anita. That does not happen very mm -hmm. good. Tyler Gaffley, on one of our excellent riders, had himself a day yesterday. He did. Four win Friday for Tyler. It's big races uh, that he was a winner of as well. Um, taking a look at social engagement, who just ran them off their feet in the sixth race, able to hold on. So four win day for Florida's own Tyler Gaffley. We'll see how he carries that momentum into the weekend. Just a week or so down the road, what a, a week, what a Saturday we're going to have with, uh, you know, 15 stakes coast to coast with our sister track, Santa Anita. That's right. It's Fountain of Youth Day at Gulfstream Park and Big Cap Day at Santa Anita. So 15 stakes. It'll be a free contest with a $5 million jackpot. Make sure you check out all the details uh, on First Bet and play along. It's going to be a terrific day of racing from start to finish all across the country. All across the country is right. And let's keep that theme. What about uh, Sunday at at Santa Anita. Yeah, mandatory payout in their Rainbow Six. Everybody loves that. Pool expected to exceed $5 million. 20 cent Rainbow Pick Six payout Sunday, February 20th at Santa Anita. We hope you'll be locked in. Here's what you do. You hit for the million today. You yeah. take a little of that and you play this on Sunday. I love it's, it. it's like a perfect it. plan. Yeah. You, all you got to do is hit it. It's very simple. No, it's not, but it's a lot of fun. That's it, right? That's it. It's ridiculous. <laughs> I remember the first time I came to Gulfstream. It was like this big fairy tale place. We back. Northern Dancer, winner of the Florida Derby. Yeah. All the history, and all these great horses, trainers, jockeys. It is Barbaro to the final furlong. He is a neck and front. Barbaro wins. It was everything that I ever dreamed of. Sunday silence surges to the front. First day, opening day of the championship, me. I was kind of starstruck. You're watching LeBron James 
and then next thing you know, you're playing basketball against them. That's how I felt when I'm riding with Donny V, riding with Ira, Luis. So many famous people come, Post Malone, for all. J-Lo was there, it's epic. The weather is beautiful. The facility is phenomenal. It's all about Knicks go. Knicks go makes it four in a row. It's one of the most beautiful tracks in the country, surrounded by some of the greatest horses and riders. It's just, it's amazing. I grew up in Louisiana. My dad was a jockey and uh, my grandfather was a trainer. My grandfather trained in the backyard, so he had a barn behind the trailer house that we lived in. And so every afternoon when I'd get off the school bus, I was straight to the barn doing chores. I was an only child with no other kids around. You know, horses, they, you know, looking back now, I didn't know then, but they were therapy for me. I just cherished them, you know, they're the um, best thing could have happened to me.